Last night we started our series for this week on You Will Pass the Test. Amen? We started our series on You Will Pass the Test. And on last night, we zeroed in on pressure. Amen? Pressure means to be pressed on, means to go through difficult situations. And no matter who you are, you are going to you're going to face trials, you're going to face tests, you're going to go through tribulations, because the Bible says tribulation worketh patience, amen, and let patience have a perfect work in you, that you may be complete, lacking nothing, amen, and there ain't nothing like tribulation, because it allows us to see what we are made out of, God uses tribulation to purify us, the devil uses temptation to make us to fail if he can but we know that's not going to happen but that's our topic for this week you will pass the test and on last night we zeroed in on like i said we zeroed in on pressure amen but on tonight we are talking about no pain no gain glory to god no pain no gain that's what we are focusing on tonight I want to jump right into the Word of God here on tonight. I'm just continuing from where we left off last night, but on tonight, we are focusing on no pain, no gain. So let's go right into the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Paul says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Now we're talking about no pain, no gain. And I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus, your faith will pass the test. Amen? So the Apostle Paul says, I want to know Jesus. That word know right there means to know him intimately. Paul said, I want to know Jesus intimately. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. That means Paul is saying, I want to be a man who walks in the power of God. I want to be a man who demonstrates the power of God. I want to be a man that when I open my mouth and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Lord will confirm the word with signs, wonders, and miracles follow. It's the apostle Paul that made a powerful statement in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul says, my brethren, when I came unto you, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Paul said, I didn't come to you with excellency of speech or of wisdom. He said, but I came in demonstration of the Spirit of God and of power so that your faith may not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Paul said, so when I came, I came in demonstration and power so that your faith may not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. That's what the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 20. After Jesus appeared to his apostles, the Bible says, they went forth preaching the word of God everywhere and the Lord working with them, confirming the word which signs following amen there ain't nothing like preaching the gospel of jesus christ and having miracles take place to confirm the preaching of the gospel so paul said that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death now i want you to see something here you're going to see why we said no pain no gain paul made the proper connection here because a lot of us we want to experience the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We want to experience the power of God. We want to experience signs, wonders, and miracles. We want to experience the gifts of the Holy Ghost. We want to see the supernatural in action in our midst. But see, some of us are lacking what Paul is saying here. He said, not only do I want to know him in the power of his resurrection, but Paul said, I also want to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. There ain't nothing like going through it for the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. The fellowship of his sufferings draw us into a place of intimacy that you are not going to know him just alone in the power of his resurrection. Experiencing the power of God is not enough to bring us into that intimate close relationship with the Lord Jesus. So we are not only going to know him in the power of his resurrection, but we need to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. It's not going to be smooth sailing. Amen. Are you here? 
So he said, no pain, no gain. That's what we call this tonight. No pain, no gain. Glory to God. Notice what the Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. The Bible says, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Do you hear that? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. That word, watch this, that word suffer right there means to undergo trials, to experience tribulations, amen, to be tested, glory to God, watch this, so the word suffer right there means to undergo trials, to deal with different tests, amen, but notice what he says, he said if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him, that word reign means to rule like a king, it means to have dominion, it means to have power, it means to dominate, it means to be able to subdue, but if you are going to reign with him, you are going to have to experience the fellowship of his sufferings. They spat on him, amen? They criticized him. They ridiculed him. They said he is casting out demons through Beelzebub by the power of demons. They call him a child of the devil. There are times that we are going to suffer for the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of First and Second Peter, it says we are not only called to experience the good times, but we are also called to experience his sufferings. Amen. If you are walking upright before God, you are going to go through trials. You are going to go through tribulations you're going to deal with temptations you're going to deal with testings but i got good news for you no pain no gain amen i said no pain no gain so for you that are experiencing tough times i have good news for you there is something that's going to come out of you going through amen now we're going to continue from last night second corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 and 9 makes this statement we are troubled on every side yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair we are persecuted but not forsaken we are cast down but not destroyed we are made out of something that we can't be whipped we are made out of something that we are not going to be defeated the bible says for whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world amen we are born of the spirit of god we are born of the son of god we are born of the blood of the lord jesus we have the very nature of god existing on the inside of us we are born of his bones and flesh of his his flesh so no matter how tough the trials get no matter how the devil try to tempt us we're gonna make it we're gonna come out on the other side the bible says in first peter chapter 5 verse 8 the bible says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil he goes about like a roaring lion seeking those whom he may devour but the bible says resist him being steadfast in the faith do i have anybody that's steadfast do i have anybody that says on christ the solid rock i stand all of the ground is sinking sand do I have anybody that says, I believe God. If God said it, I believe it. That settles it. Job said he knows the way that I take, that when he try me, I'm coming forth as pure gold. I stop by to let somebody know, you're going to come out of this. You're going to overcome this. You are more than a conqueror. I'm here to declare to you that in all these things, you are more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus, who love you and gave himself for you you're gonna make it I know some of you are going through but I want you to know you're gonna make it God is for you the Lord's on your side and this battle that you are faced with this battle is not yours this battle belongs to the Lord he's gonna bring you out of this you are coming out so the Apostle Paul says this in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 10 through 12 Paul says always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body he says for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh so then death worketh in us but life in you this is my first point we will never promise it was going to be easy i want you to pay attention to what the apostle paul said the apostle paul said always bearing about in the body 
the dying of the Lord Jesus. Do you see that? No matter where you turn in this life, you're going to go through it. No matter where you go in this life, there's going to be somebody that's against you. There's going to be somebody that's willing to criticize you. You are not going to be accepted of everybody. In fact, the Bible gives a stern warning and declare, be aware when all men speak well of you. Are you listening to me? Because this is how they treated the false prophets. If you are genuine, if you are holy, if you are righteous, if you are upright in the eyes of God, you are going to go through the fire. You are going to go through hell and back. Everybody is not going to like you. Some people are going to criticize you. They're going to call you everything but a child of God. But no doubt, I don't care what they call you. It doesn't matter what they think about you. The only thing that matters is that God call you. God have his hands on your life and you are the apple of his eyes. Notice those words. Paul said, always bearing in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That word always bearing means to carry about or to transport. Have you ever noticed no matter where you go, your adversary, the devil, is always doing things to put the pressure on you. He's putting the pressure on you because you remind him of Jesus. You remind him of the apostles. You remind him of Moses and Elijah who defeated him at every turn. No matter how the devil turns up the pressure, I'm here to declare to you tonight, no pain, no gain. I want you to see something here. We go through trials to crucify things in us that's not of God. This ain't popular preaching today because everyone want a good pat on their back. My friend, I wish I could have just give you a pat on the back message. But if I only preach the good things out of the Bible, I'll be a false prophet. It's not always easy. You are not always going to have it easy. Everybody is not always going to be for you. Are you here? Can I preach the truth to you? I'm not here to tickle your air. I'm here to preach to you so the power of God can rest on your life. The apostle Paul prayed and he cried out to God in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul cried out and he said, God, take this thing away from me. He had three seasons of, of intense praying and fasting before God. And you know what God's answer was to Paul? God said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in the time of weakness. After God revealed to Paul that answer, the apostle Paul didn't pray about it anymore, but he made this statement. Paul says, nevertheless, I will glory in my trials. I will glory in my tribulations for it's when I go through trials it's then that the power of God that the anointing of the Holy Ghost it rests on my life it's in those times that I experience his nearness I experience his power I experience some of the greatest miracles it was when Paul and Silas they were whipped they were beaten they were thrown in prison my God think about it they had a great opportunity to complain they had a great opportunity to whine but the Bible says they begin to pray and sing praises unto God that's what you ought to do instead of complaining you ought to open your mouth and give God a praise that you are still alive you still have strength in your body you have food in your cabinets you got a roof over your head you got a bed to sleep in my God you got a reason to praise him I went into Uganda and some of the areas that we went into in Uganda some people are sleeping by the garbage bin. Some people just have a few pieces of metal slapped together and they are living under that. That's not your condition tonight. You are blessed. You got a reason to praise him. You got a reason to magnify him. I said God's hand is on your life. I know people are talking about you. I know they are criticizing you. But you're going to make it. You're coming out more than a conqueror. Notice what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 11. For we which live are always delivered unto death. You know why you are catching hell? You know why you are going through the fire?